Hello, and welcome back to tutorials on GMesh for computational grid generation. GMesh is an unstructured grid generation software, which is free and open source. Today, I want to talk about fields, which is one way to control the resolution and, say, grid density as a function of space for particular grids. In my time in NASA, we actually struggled to find these types of solvers and control over our unstructured meshes for computational fluid dynamics. I want to show you just the most simple way to change your mesh and control mesh density near certain structures. I've created this simple example, which you see on your screen to illustrate this process. I basically have a flow with maybe that comes in this left boundary and exits the right. I would imagine the upper part is maybe a free field boundary, and this is a wall and a wall lower here. So I have a backward facing step and I have a cylinder in the flow. It's just for illustrative example. This is not really any kind of flow I'm particularly interested in. I just created it to illustrate the idea of fields. The flow might come in and it wraps around the cylinder and there's probably a little vortex street behind it if it's a low speed incoming boundary condition. And there's a backward facing step and a boundary layer might form here and shut off and there's a recirculation region before it goes out the boundary. Now this outlet boundary is not placed far enough downstream compared to the backward facing step or cylinder and the inlet condition should probably be placed farther to the left. But once again this is just for illustrative purposes only. Now let's say I want to resolve the grid in here. I could easily go into my um, global mesh size factor and just make it really small but I may not want to make this part of the grid up here that fine because there won't be much flow gradients in here and I don't really care. So I'll just leave it at my value of 0.25 and I'll recreate the grid 1D, 2D, and there's my grid. So let's try and add some fields. And the first thing I want to do is trying to add in a field to try and resolve the, the wake in here and a little bit of the boundary layer and resolve the flow in this region only. I don't want to resolve any of the flow out here initially or around the cylinder. I'll do that later. So what we'll do is we will go into mesh, open that up, and go into define, and say size at fields. Go ahead and click that button, left click, and a window will come up. And I only have a window that says size at fields. Now, if we hold down the new button, there's many options to choose from. And they all have different functions. For example, minimum will ensure that within the domain, there's some minimum of particular fields. We'll use that later. There's also structured, which loads in files, there's thresholds, there's a maximum field or maximum number of grid points. We can add in gradients, and, um, and then most importantly, we might be able to even put in a boundary layer with certain parameters. For example, let's do boundary layer. And a window comes up, and all you would have to do is fill out these little form and um, hit apply, and it'll apply the field. If you go under help, it'll tell you what each one of these little values are. Before we even look at boundary layer, we should do something simpler. So let's get rid of boundary layer, hit delete, and now say file new, and we'll do box. And now if you wonder what these parameters are, you can always click help and you can see their description. I'll just tell you what they are right now. Thickness is the thickness of like say the box itself. We're just going to set that to say 0 0.10. That's the thickness between the inner and outer parts of the body in the box. Vn is the grid point spacing approximately inside the box. So let's just say for now that's 0 0.10. The grid point spacing outside the box will set to be a higher value. Let's say it's 0 0.50. Now that's much bigger than, of course, my background grid. In fact, my background grid was 0 0.25, so let's make that the same, just to be consistent, 0 0.25. And now x max and x min are the ranges of the box. So my grid goes all the way to 4, so I'll just set that to 4. And it goes to negative 2 in the x range, negative 2. In y, this point here is my origin. So I'll just say y max is 0. And y min, this is negative 2, so I'll go a little bit more. I'll go to negative 3. It doesn't have to conform to my actual ranges. And then for z max and z min, I do have to have some thickness. So I'll just say this is, say, um, I don't know, 0 0.50 and negative 0 0.50. Okay, make a note of these parameters. I hit apply, and it's done. And all I need to select set this background field, apply. All right, close it up. And now let's regenerate our grid with these options 1D, 2D, and watch. Now my new grid is created. You'll see I have a much finer mesh, but you'll see in this region, in the wake, the mesh is even finer. Let's zoom in there to get 
a visualization. You can see that going along right there. So I think my mesh is too fine and up in here. So let's adjust that one more time. Size at fields going and click box. And let's say V out will now be, let's just put it as 1.0. And VN will leave as, say, 0 0.05 now, which is much smaller. Let's hit Apply and see what happens. 1D, 2D. There's my new mesh. So you can see in this box re region, in the range, I have really defined it. It might be better if I make my box region go a little bit above Y and maybe make it a little bit finer. Um, outside the mesh just to refine this region. But we'll do that later. We'll just leave it coarse. So let's do it one more time. Size it fields, box. You can see this is an iterative process, which is kind of fun. Let's just make the zero point, say, zero 0.05. So it's about five centimeters if I'm in SI units. And for outside the box, I'll make it 0 0.75 just to make it a little bit finer. And let's make this, leave it as 0.5. I like that. Nice and fine. Apply and close. 1D, 2D, let's see what happens. There we are. Now we can see in this wake region, I have a very, very fine grid, and it slowly moves out to a coarser grid. Now, by changing the box thickness, this can vary at a much higher rate. Let's try that now. 1D, go back to size at fields, box, and make my thickness say, hmm, let's do to 0 0.50 out to see what happens. And we'll say V out will be a little bit finer at 0 0.50. Let's see these effects. 1D, 2D. There you go. So you can see that the region has um, been a little bit smoother in their shear layer. Realistically, if I was doing this simulation, I would extend this little box region to be much higher. But you can see now I control the grid points in this region. Maybe I don't even want them to go all the way to the boundary. I could do this one more time just for purposes. Instead of getting, say, all the way to the boundary, I might go to, say, 3 and see what happens. And that'll be our last box operation, 1D, 2D. There you go. See, it goes up to x equals 3. And my weight coarsens, and I'll let these turbulent eddies dissipate as it goes outside the domain through numerical dissipation. Let's try a new size of field to resolve the grid around the cylinder. Let's zoom in. This is about x equals 0, y equals 1, with a radius of about 0.15 meter. So let's try and resolve the grid just around the cylinder. We could also add another box downstream of the cylinder to try and resolve its wake. So let's try and create that field. We click Size Fields, and we'll do New, Cylinder. And you can see the options of the cylinder always by hanging Help, and I'll let you read these. And let's fill it in. We'll make the radius, say, 0 0.50. The size of the grid points inside the box is, say, let's do 0 0.05 for now. And outside, we'll make it 0 0.50. And the x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis are the axis of the cylinder. We'll leave those as what they are because it's coming out of the page. x-center is at 0 and y-center of 1. We're all set. Hit Apply and make sure it's set as background field. Now let's generate it. 1D, 2D. There you go. We've increased the resolution of the mesh around the cylinder. But it doesn't have much of a thickness. Let's make V out a little bit smaller to be 0 0.25. Apply that and go 1D, 2D, and you'll see this is our new mesh. It's that easy. But you might notice we've lost our box. It's because for this particular system in size fields, we have two independent field operations, and they both can't be enabled at once. And so we need to take the minimum of both so we can have them both applied. So we'll go to new, minimum, and we'll say the field list is one and two. Hit apply, and we'll set that as the background field, apply. Now go to 1D, 2D, and we'll generate our mesh, and we'll see what we get. So now we've applied both fields simultaneously. We've taken the minimum field spacing between our two particular functions. You can see, and let's zoom in here, how our grid is more resolved around the cylinder, and of course, a little bit near the boundary layer here, and of course in the wake. Now we can always go back into other fields by clicking size fields and you can play with any number of these values and look up in perhaps the help menu to get you a better idea of how the fields form.
You can imagine that you can resolve turbulent wakes, shear layers, and boundary layers through a combination of these fields and then selecting the minimum operation for the different fields right here. This is probably the most important one, which you set as your background mesh. Then you type in the list of your field operations for your particular case. This technology really hasn't come into play in the market until the, really the last maybe five to 10 years. It's quite amazing that it's available in a free product. Anyway, it's a great way to control your particular boundary layers. Even then, you can still go in and you can smooth your meshes in 2D, for example. And note that these also apply, of course, in three dimensions, because the field functions themselves are, of course, three-dimensional and work on surfaces, lines, and volumes easily and respectively. Thanks a lot for your time today. I'm Professor Steve Miller.